Nomani speaks about both situations, saying it would be dishonest if I said that this particular scenario didn't hurt me. But Nomani does say she hopes Camila is now a better person. Tweets that resurfaced on Wednesday featuring screenshots of Camila's old Tumblr account where she posted offensive and racist memes and comments. The memes and comments contain harsh language, including multiple uses of the N-word and racial stereotyping towards the black community. Cabello writing in a statement, When I was younger, I used language that I'm deeply ashamed of. Even though the 22-year-old star may have made the post when she was a teenager. At 15, she had to know racism is wrong. So I, okay, this is kind of a hard question. I don't want you to take any offense to it at all. I just kind of wanted to do it for black Twitter, black Sean stands everywhere out there. Ignorant tweets, I guess I could say, kind of hurtful, offensive tweets that she used to tweet it before. Why has it never been acknowledged? Why has there never been anything about it? I mean, I apologize for everything insensitive that I said in the yeah. past, but with that being said, that's not my personality. Light skin. Camila Cabello is clearly racist. She has made nasty posts that are super offensive. Camilla has made fun of Asian and black people, and it seems like she uses ignorant stereotypes to fuel her comedy. It also looks like her ex-boyfriend, Sean Mendez, has made some controversial posts himself. So let's get into it. <laughs> As you guys know, we uncover controversial stories on this channel, and it's important for me to get the whole story when I do my research. So Atlas VPN is crucial for me to stay protected and to access restricted content. You guys need to invest in a virtual private network because it can stop ads, it can stop malware, it can tell you whether someone is stealing your data, it can block malicious links and trackers. You can also protect your devices for the next three years for just $183 plus three months for free. Atlas VPN gives you the ability to change your location and access restricted content, which is important for me because there is so much content that is blocked in the US, so placing myself in another country opens so many doors. For example, you can change your location while using a streaming service like Netflix and access a brand new library of TV. TV shows and movies you've never seen before. So we can go and place ourselves in the UK or Hong Kong and see what they're watching over there. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount, which means you can be protected for the next three years for just $183 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus, they'll give you three months for free. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the description below and sign up for Atlas VPN. Thank you, Atlas VPN, for sponsoring this video, and enjoy. We're gonna be talking about some of Camila Cabello's worst moments online. And let's just say that she's got an issue when it comes to racism. It actually turns out that she and her ex-boyfriend, Sean, have made some controversial posts on social media. But before we talk about Sean's past, let's get into Camilla. We're gonna censor some of these racial slurs, but here are some tweets from Camilla's backup account where she writes, Shout out to my slur, Georgie Washington. Um, you was the flyest at the Revolutionary War. Some stupid tweet. In this one, she writes, Why are people talking bad about Obama? He rocks. And then she uses a slur. It seems like she's got some like weird obsession with Obama specifically. Here's a tweet that she retweeted. Why isn't Zayn dancing with the rest of his family? Here's a tweet from her main account where she writes, say goodbye to the colored shirts and bows. I'm a gangster hood thug rat. So those tweets don't look good, but what looks even worse are her racially motivated comments about her bandmate, Normani. So here are some nasty messages between Camilla and her friend where they're talking about Fifth Harmony, and at some point, Camilla describes her group as four in slurs and this friend encourages it claiming that normani is actually this slur it's really disgusting seeing how camilla's just laughing about this and um joking about someone who she works with so closely like i just would be so uncomfortable when these messages were leaked camilla's fans ended up bullying normani which doesn't make sense to me because 
Camilla called Normani these horrible names, yet Normani was the one who got a ton of backlash from her fans, and Camilla did nothing to stop this. Actually, at some point, Camilla's mom defended Camilla when her fans were racially attacking Normani instead of defending Normani and asking her fans to stop attacking her. Camilla's mom dismisses Normani's racial attacks in order to victimize her daughter. In August 2016, Normani took a break from social media after being cyberbullied by Camilla's fans. In her departure letter, she explains, I can't subject myself any longer to the hate. The very next day, following Normani's announcement, Camilla's mom decided to like a tweet criticizing her decision to leave. At this point, Camilla did not defend Normani, but wrote on Twitter that she stands by love only and doesn't tolerate any hate, racism, or discrimination. Which doesn't add up to me because her Twitter and you're about to see her Tumblr are extremely racist. And when these racist posts came about, Normani had some comments on what Camilla had posted. Normani struggled under the spotlight while in Fifth Harmony when anonymous racist trolls posted photoshopped images of her being hung, other sending death threats. But the resurfaced racist posts from former bandmate Camilla's old Tumblr account hit closer to home for Normani. This reporter named Brittany asked Normani about Camilla's post and her thoughts, and I actually really respect this because Normani said that she wanted to get back to her, and she wanted to go and write out an email so she can articulate exactly what she wanted to say. She wanted to make sure her thoughts weren't misconstrued, and she claims that she's extremely uncomfortable by it all and disappointed in what Camilla has done. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Normani speaks about both situations, saying, it would be dishonest if I said that this particular scenario didn't hurt me. It was devastating that this came from a place that was supposed to be a safe haven and a sisterhood because I knew that if the tables were turned, I would defend each of them in a single heartbeat. It took days for her to acknowledge what I was dealing with online and in years for her to take responsibility for the offensive tweets that recently resurfaced. Whether or not it was her intention, this made me feel like I was second to the relationship she had with her fans. But Normani does say she hopes Camilla is now a better person and she says, I don't want to say that this situation leaves me hopeless because I believe that everyone deserves the opportunity for personal growth. I really hope that an important lesson was learned in this and I hope that there is genuine understanding about why this was absolutely unacceptable. I'm glad that Normani spoke her truth because more people need to speak out against Camilla and Normani is not the only person that Camilla used these slurs against because there are also other DMs out there where you could see Camilla is comfortably using the N slur for whatever reason. Like, she just feels like she can use it, I guess. Now, let's get into this nasty-ass Tumblr, because the posts that she makes on Tumblr are unreal. So, there was a Twitter account called Motivate Fenty. They're still around, but these tweets have been deleted. I'm assuming they've been threatened with lawsuits, but they found this old Tumblr and exposed Camilla for it. In these posts, she used the N-word. Um, she reblogged content, which were really terrible. Um, and she also made fun of Asian people as well. Really horrible negative stereotypes. The account, which is several years old, contains a series of racist jokes and memes. Now let's go through some of these posts, like this one, which is a photo, a search engine photo meme, making fun of Asian people. In this post, Camilla was asked a question and replied with a slur. In this post, she reblogged something offensive about Mexican and black people, and I guess joking about them. Camila's new album celebrations have died down, all thanks to tweets that resurfaced on Wednesday featuring screenshots of Camila's old Tumblr account, where she posted offensive and racist memes and comments. The post shows the screenshots dating all the way back to 2012 when Camila was a teenager. However, it doesn't matter how long ago this happened because, well, they still happen. The memes and comments contain harsh language, including multiple uses of the N-word and racial stereotypes typing towards the black community. Naturally, this circulated the internet quicker than the plague, and Camila's team was forced to do some major damage control and take down all of her past Tumblr posts. However, this didn't stop fans from coming for her. I know there's gonna be someone in the comments saying, this was a different time, but it really wasn't. Like, Camilla is like really, 
next level when it comes to these reposts. Like, why is she even entertained by these things making such stupid jokes? Or this one, which is both offensive to black people and Asian people. There's another cartoon where they're making fun of one of these Winnie the Pooh characters. Then there's another meme where the the end slur is just bright and front center. Something I don't understand why Camille is so obsessed with. Here's another post which is very tasteful just kidding but they're making fun of rihanna and how chris brown assaulted her so hmm i guess she thinks that's funny we've got this post which includes a picture of lil wayne um you know just kind of out there another post where there is a slur being used another post which is glorifying stereotypes about kfc and black people and just like really just stupid and that was just camilla's backup page she has another tumblr which was her main account and at one point on her main account she was asked how do i become a strong independent black woman like you and camilla replied it's not easy i guess it's just something you have to work at which um camilla i don't believe is black but she's answering as if she's such also if you're wondering what that big bible verse was on her racist tumblr um it's john 3 16 which is um the point of christianity like about salvation and that um christians are saved uh, it's really ironic to see her include this like scripture on the same page of where, where all of this hate is featured it's just so ironic you guys might be wondering, how do we know that this is Camilla's Tumblr page? As Motivate Fenty pointed out, Camilla made it very clear that this was her personal Tumblr page because she had an old picture of herself as the icon and posted a picture of herself for an anonymous user. She also deleted her Tumblr page and her backup Twitter page as soon as these threads came out, which made her look really guilty. Back when these posts resurfaced, she got in a lot of trouble and she had to publicly address it. After that apology from singer Camila Cabello, Speaking out this morning after past social media posts were discovered, posts that she is now calling, quote, horrible and hurtful. Ariel Reshef is here with this story. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, Cecilia. A day after those derogatory comments surfaced, the superstar taking to social media to apologize, saying she knows her past language was wrong and asking for forgiveness. So here's the post that Camilla made on her story. Um, the text is really small. But she writes, when I was younger, I used language that I'm deeply ashamed of and will forever regret, which is kind of like an admission right there. Um, I was uneducated and ignorant. Yes, you really were. Apologizing for past racist language and images she allegedly used on a now deleted social media account. Cabello writing in a statement, when I was younger, I used language that I'm deeply ashamed of and will regret forever. I was uneducated and ignorant, and once I became aware of the history and the weight and the true meaning behind this horrible and hurtful language, I was deeply embarrassed I ever used it. She continues, I'm 22 now. I'm an adult, and I've grown, and I've learned, and I'm conscious and aware of the history and the pain it carries, <laughs> using those slurs that you used so loosely, and about your your bandmates. The truth is, I was embarrassingly ignorant and unaware. Imagine how she was in person if she was like this on her public social media. She stated that now she's 22 and an adult and that those mistakes don't represent the person she is or the person she's ever been and that she now uses her platform to speak on injustice and inequality and will continue to do so. Now, Camila's closing sentence stated, I can't say enough how deeply sorry and ashamed I feel and I apologize again from the bottom of my heart. That apology does seem pretty genuine i guess i mean it also seems like one of her like pr people could have helped her write this because after the fact and since this point um when she's asked about her twitter or social media she seems pretty like i don't know ill-willed about it like she hasn't learned her lesson in one interview she said that's why i barely go on social media there's no way to live life without making mistakes or saying the wrong thing i'm not gonna live like some perfect pop singer i'm human and the inhuman part of this is public scrutiny okay i get that at some points but i also uh feel like 
she was criticized for valid reasons like that you don't need to be perfect but like who has these racist thoughts that you are constantly like sharing all over social media as a teenager one woman writing that even though the 22 year old star may have made the post when she was a teenager at 15 she had to know racism is wrong Others coming to her defense, tweeting, at this moment, we must take her apology and hope she truly means it. I like how it's the white girl who's tweeting saying, we need to accept Camilla. Like, none of her offensive posts were about you, girl. You, you could sit down on this one. Light skin. <laughs> Now it's time to talk about Shawn Mendes. He's not as bad as Camilla, but still has had some pretty bad moments. Like this tweet, which is just stupid, where he tweets out, I'm black, burnt up, you know? Or this tweet, where this person is tweeting out um, a sincere F you to the people walking behind me, yelling those kind of thoughts. Um, Sean ends up replying to this saying, I can see the black coming out in you, Lauren, which is just like, again, so stupid, really. Um, I guess like what the offensive part here is that he's insinuating like, uh, so I guess she's cussing and defending herself. And then I don't know, he's saying that she's acting black for that reason. It just sounds like, again, just like, like, what was he really even thinking? There are also just weird tweets like this one, like the light skinned girls. Um, okay. Kind of like that vine I played a few seconds ago where it's just like he's talking about light skinned people. And here's another random tweet. Black guy jumps out of window to get away. His posts don't make as much sense as Camilla's do. Like this tweet where he writes 98% of black people are naturally gifted with the ability to dance, which is that like, I don't know if it's necessarily offensive or I just don't know what the point is of making this tweet in the first place. This post definitely doesn't work in Sean's favor. I mean, he's literally calling his friend a slur um, unless his friend posted this because it looks like his friend's holding the picture. But I'm pretty sure like Sean posted this on his main account. And yeah, that's just not really not great. Before we get to what Sean has said about his racist past, I found this one article and I wanted to read a snippet to you guys because I found it interesting. Sean often finds himself watching his own interviews and analyzing his voice and body language. He'll see an anonymous stranger comment on the way he crossed his legs once and try not to do it again. He pulls out his phone to show me his Twitter account. His name is the only recent search. In the back of my heart, he says, I feel like I need to go be seen with someone, like a girl, in public to prove to people that I'm not gay. Even though in my heart I know that it's not a bad thing, there's still a piece of me that thinks that, and I hate that side of me. So you're telling me that Sean Mendez is sitting here reading his own interviews, watching it, like you know, videos of himself walking around trying to figure out whether he looks gay or not. I mean, <laughs> you're not really doing a great job. No offense, but it just like seems like that's like kind of a gay, like coming from a gay person, that seems kind of like a gay thing to do. Sean made this post on social media. I posted some racially insensitive comments on social media when I was younger, and I am so sorry. I apologize wholeheartedly for what was said and understand how offensive those posts were. There is no place for comments like that, and those words do not represent who I am. I stand for complete inclusivity, equality, and love. Sean has also been confronted about these things in public. He actually had a show, and someone asked him about these comments, and, um, he apologized and this moment seems kind of intense but he handled it well hey guys you have time for three more questions what's your question mine yeah you're for real <laughs> let's go love okay so this is kind of i don't oh period okay sean yes so i okay this is kind of a hard question i don't want you to take any offense to it at all i just kind of wanted to do it for black twitter black sean stands everywhere out there um there's a in the past there's a lot of kind of ignorant tweets i guess i could say kind of hurtful offensive tweets that you used tweeted before i just wanted to know like why have you and i think like recently it's been deleted i don't know who was it if it was you if it wasn't but if it was or if it wasn't um why have has it never been acknowledged? Why has there never been anything about it? Um, we just kind of want to know because it's, we get a lot of hate for us supporting you, um, knowing that this has been like your past. And not to say this is you now or anything like that. It's just really important for us to know like how you are. To not acknowledge it. And, you know, I just think that a lot of things need to be moved on from. But I also think that 
the things that were saw, like I had friends when I was 14 who would like take my phone and like post things of them. Yeah. And like, because they thought it was funny that I had like 2,000 followers and they would be <laughs> things and they post photos of themselves. And at, at the time, I was just like not thinking about it. Yeah, so makes sense. I had no idea I was going to have 50 million followers. Yeah. Like <laughs> True. Which doesn't make it any better. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, totally. I mean, I apologize for everything insensitive that I said in the yeah. past. But with that being said, yeah, I think. I, that, that's not my personality. Yeah. Also, I have a Black Lives Matter flag that I might throw on stage, so please catch it. Throw that at me. Period! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Sean explained himself well? Do you think Camilla could have had a better apology? Because I feel like something in person could have done her better for how much she posted. But I also don't really think that she feels genuinely sorry. But let's go ahead and open this P.O. Box package item from Candles Charm. It looks like they are located in Oregon. Hey Sloan, I've been a fan since last year and I truly enjoy your content. I know the type of content you make keeps a lot of eyes on you. Please accept this protection candle to protect you from those who give you evil eye. I make these type of candles myself and sell them online at www.candlescharm.com. And she has protection, or they have protection, money, love, and life transformation candles. Although my candles are magical, they can be used for everyday use. Aw, oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to try this out. And it looks like this says cozy brown on it. Sandalwood. Mmm, smells really good too. And I also, I don't know if this baggie, if you meant to send this part too, but this little baggie came in here. But it says, um, how to use, close your eyes, repeat, I am safe, I am protected, bad energies are neglected and light the candle. Well, thank you so much. I'll list your shop below and I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.